All right. Um, <laughs> cool. So we're not officially starting yet, but uh, just want to tell you guys and girls a bit about the journey on how we got here. Actually, the journey started in Vorarlberg, which is a part of Austria. And Frederick is in the first row, so he drove the Tesla, which you can see outdoors uh, next to the entrance. He drove it all the way, I think overall 13 hours driving time, because we really wanted to make sure that it's now visible here. Really wanted to make sure that all of you can see that, because we've been in that space of IoT plus blockchain for many, many years, and it took a long time until something happened, and now a lot of things are happening. And I think Tesla is probably the most, the coolest machine we can imagine to see uh, on Web3. Ah, this one, perfect. Cool, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, going back. Yes. Amazing, cool. Before we're getting started with the Teslas, I'd like to give you some context on why this is so important. Welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. And that's how we're getting there. Three facts. First, thousands of intelligent machines are created every day. Second, those machines are getting smarter every day. Third, those machines are probably going to take your job. Don't worry, it gets worse. Those machines are controlled by a handful of corporations. So as those machines take our jobs, the value they generate gets concentrated into the hands of the 1%. What about everyone else? Glad you asked. Historians, humanitarians, professors, your Uncle John, sci-fi novelists alike warn that we're heading towards societal collapse. Some argue that dystopia is already upon us. So we're urging you to sell all your belongings while you still can and join us in creating some crypto utopia on some Pacific island somewhere. Kidding. There's a better way. What if the more jobs machines take, the more money everyone makes? Sounds crazy, right? But as that famous saying goes, it's those crazy enough to think they can change the world that do. We are crazy enough, and we know we can. It's a radical idea calling for radical redesign of our digital systems, from centralized to decentralized. Here's how things look today. Let's take Uber as an example. You want a taxi. You unlock the phone, you tap the app, you order the taxi, you hop in. You think you're using a peer-to-peer -peer system, you to taxi driver. You're not you're actually using a peer-to-big-tech-to-peer system. And we think it's time to change that, because the peer-to-peer -peer era is now. The process won't change. You still unlock your phone, tap the app, order the taxi, hop in. But the app, which network it runs on and where it is hosted will change. From centralized, corporate-controlled, peer to big tech to peer to decentralized, community-owned, peer to peer. Too many big words. Let's bring in John Lennon. Imagine you could order a taxi without a corporation watching your every move, inhaling your data and selling it to advertisers. Imagine you could choose what data to sell to who, when and for how much. Imagine you could use the Uber app without the Uber company. Imagine passengers and taxi drivers could vote on how the app is run and how much taxi drivers earn. 
Imagine that as autonomous cars keep taking taxi drivers' jobs, taxi drivers keep earning. We all earn. Uber is just one app. Now take any Internet of Things application, any app to do with vehicles, robots, devices, or machines. Any app, people-powered, community-owned, start to finish, top to bottom. Imagine that as vehicles, robots, and devices on land, in the sky, on the sea, or even in space, take our jobs, we all earn. The Peak Network enables this. A network that instead of stealing power, value, and data, distributes it. Peak is a community-governed network where the community comes to build community-owned applications for community-owned machines to create community value. Peak is a layer one for Deepin. Deepin stands for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Networks. Remember the term, because it's the next big thing in Web3. Deepens are physical infrastructure networks. You can think of charging stations or 5G hotspots, which communities crowdsource together and then provide connectivity or energy through those networks. And instead of big corporates earning all that money and generating all that value, the community who builds that infrastructure earns and owns the infrastructure. Deepens are estimated to be a total of 3.5 trillion by 2028 alone. That's a massive market opportunity. And Peak is Web3's fastest and largest Deepen ecosystem, fastest growing. From amazing corporations such as Bosch and Airbus or the Fraunhofer Institute to incredible integrations such as Fetch AI or Ocean Protocol. And of course, most important, the incredible Deepen use cases building on top be a charge, building a decentralized charging network, or Natix, building the Internet of Cameras. And of course, today we're here for eLoop, we're here for the Teslas. eLoop is Austria's largest electric vehicle charging provider. They operate a fleet of more than 200 Teslas and have more than 90,000 registered users already. eLoop is the first project ever to tokenize a car sharing fleet. They crowdsourced 1.6 million euros from their community to buy Teslas. Those Teslas generated 450,000 revenue, and that revenue got split between the community and not only into the pockets of one company. Already more than 21,000 trips are recorded on the blockchain. Thanks to eLoop, everyone now can own a part of a Tesla fleet and earn from that. And the coolest thing is, people who own a part of that fleet treat that fleet like their own cars. And that's amazing. That changes and solves a lot in car sharing. It's a simple but brilliant model. eLoop crowdsources capital from the community, buys the Teslas, tokenizes them, and they generate revenue. And that revenue is split between the community who financed the cars in the first place. Tesla sharing is just the beginning. eLoop is expanding to do the same with charging stations, solar panels, or even something crazy like wind turbines, which are massive. But now it's time for the Teslas. Let's see Tesla's in action on Polkadot. We need sound, please. <laughs> Is that possible? Um, can, you, can you imagine a wind turbine being community funded, like those massive things? Actually, pretty cool. And then everyone, when it generates energy, that energy is being, or that money from that energy is being distributed between the people who funded it. This is truly revolutionary in the way infrastructure can be built 
and then also who can earn from that infrastructure. Opens incredible opportunities for everyone to earn. Is the sound working or? Restart. Uh, the, the audio output. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Go up there. And then there's the, um, yeah, micro where it says microphone, uh, the headphones next to, yes, this one. Uh, there it should pop up, like the, the output. Now, this is uh, something else. It, it doesn't display it yet. I mean, ex ex yeah, I mean, that should be correct. Yeah, let's try. Okay, that's good. Like we get more <laughs> excitement towards the actual demo demonstration. And no sound yet. <laughs> yeah, this there. may seem like regular car sharing, but it isn't. And that's the whole point. Same experience, but what's going on behind the scenes is different. It's better. Better for you, better for your community, better for the planet. Unlike traditional car sharing, when you car share with eLoop on peak, the community earns, not the corporates. And you can verify that. You can verify everything. On the Blockchain Explorer, you can verify that revenue generated by your car sharing session was recorded on the peak network and split among the community. By heading over to the EOT dashboard, you can see that 100 Teslas have generated over 82,000 euro from 4,000 plus sessions, which was split by 420 community members. Web3 car sharing by eLoop on peak. Same, same, but better. Amazing. <laughs> Thank, thanks, everyone. Yeah, this is actually the official end of the presentation, but we do have a Q&A session planned. And we have one of eLoop's co-founders here, Frederick Nachbauer, drove the Tesla all the way up to Copenhagen. So please, a warm welcome to Frederick. <laughs> test, test. Otherwise, you can try to <laughs> speak in my microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Now it works. Hi. Amazing, amazing. Hi, everyone. Any questions? This is uh, quite new, complicated. I mean, I can ask with uh, something that, or start with what I find fascinating, because I was thinking about decentralized car sharing for a long time. And this is complicated, because those assets, those machines are worth a lot, they cost a lot, they need to be insured, maintained and operated. So how, do you guys, how did you guys solve that problem and actually make it possible for anyone to invest easily in the fleet without having all the burden that comes with a car like a Tesla? Yeah, so basically we try to get rid of everything that bothers people, like um, insurance. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Insurance, um, cost of cleaning, like putting a car somewhere, charging, everything that basically borders, and just make like a product, a financial product, which people can invest, participate, and have like a fair share of our growth. So if we succeed, people succeed. And that was always our goal. And I think we actually managed to do this quite good because uh, for everybody that participates, they as soon as they start to like buy tokens on our site, next day they already get revenue. They already have yield. Um, I mean, as long as people drive with our cars. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, biggest fear for us in the beginning was transparency. Like, <laughs> like everybody, I mean, you need to report, you need to report. But actually, it made us so much more stronger in our own opinion that we're doing the right thing. And yeah, that we also see in the community. They, as you already told, like in the beginning, super nice presentation. Um, they, they feel like being, a, like they are a stakeholder, in, in my opinion. and they really try to like get the business more running for us. They help us to more more or less clean the cars. They use the cars. 
because they are tokenized. They go for longer trips because they know, okay, they get like revenue back from their own trips, but also bring it back to the other community members. They put the cars in hot zones, which basically are generating more or less more revenue. Kind of like this. Yeah. Uh, amazing. So get away all the cons and just pros, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I think that's how we need to start because it needs to be super simple. Like if people need to... Oh, yeah. And yeah, one thing that we already did in the beginning, we let people pay out in fiat because we, we know like our users are they're coming from a completely different background. They, they like to drive a car, but then they're now in token holders. And it makes it too complicated if you like pair it with a stable coin or anything because they need to get it back out. And... But we incentivize them to use what they generate to use it back in our system, which okay. has an opportunity for a utility token. And then we can incentivize them to use it for like, getting cheaper trips and get more incentivization. Because what we want in the end is that they drive more with our cars and being more engaged in our community. Yeah. Cool. Last question would be, what's been the most difficult on the journey to, to achieving it, actually, having it in production, <coughs> up and running? Um, I think the most difficult was the car sharing itself, to get it running in the beginning. Um, also to get, I mean, why we did it is obvi obvious, because we're not an OEM. We're like four-man startup from Vorarlberg, as you said in the beginning. And for us, the biggest one was to get fin financially like funded well. And with the project, we kind of, we kind of like, um, yeah. People recognized us as a strong uh, performer, and we can get from zero market share to 25%, which is actually for us a huge win. And we're still the only one that does like eco sharing. Our mission is also still the same one. And I think the biggest issue was like the starting point, and then like coming from a tech aspect, we kind of got like acknowledged from people and. Um, yeah, from there on, it just organically grew. Like the community came with, with it, and still very strong. Like talking to them every day, and yeah, amazing. I, I don't. I, I think the car sharing was the biggest <laughs> issue. I can imagine. Like, get everything running, basically. Massive operation. Yeah. Yeah. Super expensive to get started. Ah, we have a question actually, and yeah. What's the, the promo, promo code? code? Yeah, to sign up. Uh, I can just <laughs> give you later a, <laughs> a voucher. Yeah, actually, we will uh, spend some time at the Tesla outside. So if you're curious, you can pop by and we, we can show you the demo in, in real life. If you show me that you get an account, I can give you a promo code. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening. Thank you.